Welcome back to Uncensored with me, Rosanna Lockwood. Now, in March, the US powerlifting governing body ruled they would allow trans women to compete in female competitions. North of the border in Canada, the rules, however, seem to be very relaxed, with reports that athletes can compete under whatever gender they feel like on any given day, apparently with no proof needed other than self-identification. Now, April Hutchinson is a competitive powerlifter. She's now speaking up claiming it's unfair to biological women, and she's even been threatened with a ban from her sport for expressing her views. She says Anne Andres, a trans woman, currently holds the highest deadlift of all time in Canada and just announced she will attempt to go to the World Championship. So, should we embrace inclusivity in sports? Uh, are women failing to be protected in sports? April Hutchison joins us now to talk through this. April, uh, thank you very much for making time to speak to us. I know you're a very busy woman. You've actually just been competing in Grand Cayman. I hope that went well for you. Um, <laughs> just talk to us a little bit for an international audience. Give us a sense of what you're campaigning about. Yeah, so actually, um, I've been a powerlifter with the Canadian uh, Powerlifting Union for about four years now. Over the last year, I have been basically, I guess, fighting my federation um, to ban, uh, I guess, trans women, um, also known as men, to be competing with women in, in powerlifting. They have basically ignored my pleas, as well as many other women who don't agree with it. And they've actually even uh, threatened to suspend me for speaking up about the matter. Um, I don't know if you saw my speech a couple of weeks ago. I was in the USA, and I basically told a very heartfelt speech about, you know, the discriminate or the, basically them, them threatening me to suspend me off of Team Canada. Um, I just competed last week with Team Canada. I was allowed to go, but the, the threats keep coming and, um, you know, disciplinary action for speaking up has been ongoing for the last year. Do you think this is a specific difference between the US and Canada or other countries in Canada? Is Canada particularly inclusive when it comes to this? Yeah, that's the thing is, um, Canada, I mean, I'm not going to use the expression woke, but I mean, we have a prime minister here, Justin Trudeau, who actually on International Women's Day tweeted that trans women are women. So there's our leadership of the country. Um, but no, Canada is very, um, I guess, very lenient with, with policies. Like you mentioned, our policy, basically, you do not need any proof my boyfriend could basically walk in tomorrow, identify as a female, compete, and then the next day, you know, go back to being a man again. No proof, no ID required, just basically going on how you feel that day or whatever gender you want to identify as. Yeah, mind our viewers, just a few months ago, a uh, powerlifting coach, Avi Silverberg, actually did this, uh, went into a competition, I think, in Canada and basically competed as a man and smashed it. Here he is, and he didn't say, I'm a woman, or maybe he did just to get past the, uh, the regulations, but did it in order to prove your point, really, April, didn't he, that um, a man can just walk into a competition and just trounce, trounce everyone there? But let's make a distinction here with Anne Andres, who we, we talked about in the introduction to you. That's somebody you know personally, and that is, seems to be a source of uh, a lot of angst here. This is Anne Andrews competing, uh, a trans woman, or as you, you, you call her, a trans identifying person, uh, previously born a biological male, transitioned a long time ago, but post puberty, and I believe that's correct, and uh, is uh, taking on a lot of records. Um, talk to us about what that's been like for you. Yeah, so Anne actually just broke the, the national records for all the master records yesterday while competing at the Western Regions. He also holds the second highest deadlift in uh, our powerlifting federation of all time, of all ages. We're talking 20 and up. Um, he just turned 40, so he is a 40-year-old, 40 6-foot, uh, 250-pound man. And, you know, it's, it's been very disheartening. Um, for example, that national record that he broke, athletes have been chasing that for years. And we're, talk, we're talking top athletes who have been training and training and training. Um, you know, so it just goes to show the advantages, the physical, physiological advantages that a male has over a female, whether it's muscle mass or bone density, lung capacity, you know, I could go on, but, um, it's been very disheartening. Uh, a lot of women actually yesterday dropped out of the competition because they knew that Anne would be lifting. So they dropped, they quit, they wrote to the Federation and the Federation basically did nothing about it.
I can understand the enormous frustration, to be quite frank, because when it comes to sports and it's all about the, the physicality of what you're doing, and to put it simply, it's just it, it, it must be terribly frustrating, especially in powerlifting, which is so much to do with strength. And like, why do you think powerlifting is behaving differently here? You're talking about your federation compared to other sports when it comes to things like swimming and athletics, where internationally we have seen different policy moves. You know what, Rosanna, it's it's mind boggling. We ask ourselves that every day because I was talking to a couple of the doctors, the chief medical doctors uh, with the International Powerlifting Federation, who right now are actually working so hard around the clock to try to have the policy changed. You have, you said it, powerlifting is a strength-based sport. There's a 60% advantage in powerlifting alone between men and female. Um, you know, we've seen US UCI cycling has changed. Just recently, the International Weightlifting Federation has now created a separate category for transgender. And that's with the, the Olympic lifting, right? That's a little different than powerlifting, but still a strength sport. Uh, World Athletics, Swim Canada, every federation has even gotten rid of the uh, testosterone monitoring. That's That's been kind of like, as a term, an outdated policy right now. So. I just, I don't get why powerlifting, especially my federation, why they are not, uh, you know, they must be afraid probably to get sued, possibly. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. I, I ask myself that question every day. April, um, just before we let you go, what, what do you hope to achieve? Uh, what would you like to see happen within the next few months? Well, you know what, my main goal, you know, even if I wasn't powerlifting, I, my main goal is to have fairness for women in sports around the world globally. Canada is probably on the top of the list because we have no policy. We actually have a trans inclusion policy. We have no policy at all to protect women and girls in sports. So, I mean, if I, if I put powerlifting to the back door tomorrow and I didn't powerlift ever again, so be it. But I will keep being vocal and I will keep speaking out about fairness because we know women deserve that. It's completely unfair. It's bodies that play sports, not identities. Remember, it's bodies and biology, not identities that play sports. Uh, April, I think it would be uh, tremendously sad if you found yourself withdrawing from the sport, but we really appreciate you sharing uh, your views and your experience this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let's cross to the studio. Still joined by Grace Blakely, also Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker, who are both listening into that. And look, I know we've all potentially got very different positions on this, uh, but we are all women. Uh, my position is that, you know, obviously I'm pretty sympathetic to trans rights and I feel they're a marginalised and oppressed group mostly. But when it comes to sport, it's a little more complicated because of the physicality of it, Grace. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, I think, you know, this quite obviously, this has become a culture war issue, right? Yeah. So it's like you're either on one extreme or the other, you're either for trans women being able to compete in sports or you're against it. Um, and actually, this is very clearly something that needs to be decided by sporting bodies on a case by case basis. And also on a, literally on a case by case basis. So you need to be looking at the athlete in question, looking at whether or not there is one person dominating a sport, and then it just becomes not entertaining to watch. So you need to think about how you're doing the rules there. Um, and it's not just trans people, it's also intersex people. Mm -hmm. I remember we had the South African runner who was barred from competing yeah. exactly on the <laughs> basis that she had high testosterone levels. So clearly we're at this point now where because Often, because um, you know, competitive sports like this have grown so much and they've become so much more popular, there's a range of different people competing, that the rules mm. which gave rise to the separation of men and women's sports are being reconsidered. And do we need to now think of something like, you know, we're testing athletes based on um, maybe, you know, le like hormone levels, testosterone levels, along with other metrics of how their body performs under stress, along with thinking about, you know, if they're trans, did they transition pre I or think, post teenagerhood? Think, yeah, like all of these things need to be decided very specifically, not just this culture war you know, battle. I mean, the lady said something which is, I think is probably the, the pinnacle of this debate, which is biology over identity. On the issue of intersex people, yes, I do think it should be a case by case basis and people born with, you know, chrom um, chromosomal disorders and all of that, that's that's fine. That's biology, right? But on the issue of, of, of transgenderism, that's an identity issue, right? It's also that, a biology issue. Well, it, it's not a biology we issue. We alter it's, our it's biologies a, all the time. But no, but the thing is- We take the pill, they, we alter they, our biology. They are not, uh, fundamentally, they're not ch ch altering every single cell in their body, which is, Every single cell in your body is a marker of what your sex is. So that's completely different. On the issue of intersex, I don't think you can, I, you know, conflate that with transgenderism because you can't choose to be intersex. 
you mm. can choose to be transgender. Well, I mean, people would argue that you well, can't, but, but I think- Regardless, but that, that, is, that is the bottom line. I think obviously, and I, I know we all, agree, we're gonna, we all agree that at some point in the weeks or weeks or months that we do this job, we will talk about trans issues and we're just like, oh, why again? Mm. Because we haven't simplified what the rules should be. And mm. this is the thing, we're not, most people don't disagree. I've always said there should be a trans category for most sports, not because I'm going to be sitting at the front row watching, but because this will just, this will solve the whole debate. They get representation, they get to compete. There is no you know, issue of how female athletes feel or male athletes or any of this. There's none of this confusion and they get to compete and they get to feel represented. I don't know why we're not championing that more, championing that more, that would solve this whole problem. But really, if we keep going down to, oh, but it's not my fault, I'm trans or whatever. Look, you have your own league, case closed. I mean, let's, let's talk about the economy or taxes. How about that? <laughs> you know, I'll always talk about the economy. A lot of my numbers will be. Uh, both of you, thank you very much for giving your insight and uh, opinion on that story. Uh, yes, we do cover this issue a lot, but I think it was very interesting to hear Bill Hutchinson's experience uh, this evening.